Doc, I want you to explain something to me. There was a study that came out a couple weeks ago that said men like working with men, women like working with women. Uh, there's just a comfort in working with somebody of the same gender. Another study comes out uh, today that says nearly 40% of women prefer a male boss. Can you explain that to me? Well, you know, I looked at that study, and thank you for, for bringing it to my attention, and I looked at the other one, you know, and, and I think there is um, safety in numbers, so I think you always have to remember that. There's always a comfort zone, which is why so many leaders want to have a very diverse population in their employee base, because you want to always have comfort, comfort for dialogue. So if you have, a, you know, a proper mix of gender, age, ethnic background, then you know that that it isn't a biased, you know, workplace. I think that's important. It also reflects the customer base. In this particular study, I wouldn't really call it a study because, I, you know, I try to look at the methodology and see what, what were they trying to accomplish. And quite frankly, you know, it looks like it was just a pulse poll. And, um, and basically, you know, scanning, scanning, you know, out to get 1,000 people to respond to a couple of questions on managers to me is a very small sample. You know, if you think about it, we have over 300 million Americans, right, in the U.S. Yeah. So if you, you, you know, so sampling a thousand people is quite small, and you know, and of that 300 million, we have over almost 120 of them are working adults. So, so to me, it was like, okay, so here you have as a pulse survey or a pulse poll, and I couldn't find any details on, you know, were they in industry, what were their titles, you know, did they manage an ice cream shop, or were they working in a high tech firm? Yeah. Very general, so think, very general so we, stuff. Very general. So, you know, with that aside, you know, okay, so here we have a poll. We don't know much about it. Um, it's interesting, yes, but um, it's, it's, it's sort of conflicted. Actually, a, a research study, a series that I did a few years ago that was larger and had more interesting results, which, you know, I can talk to you about that. Yeah, what did, your, did yours back this up, contradict it? What, what did your study say? Well, you know, I think if their study, if, if their poll was larger, they probably would have come to the conclusions that I did. Um, so I, you know, my sample size was four times larger than theirs. And I did surveys like they did. Mine were, um, you know, fill in the blank types of surveys where I had to qualify the candidates. Theirs were phone. And I also did um, what they call a qualitative uh, survey, which is where you phone people and interview them so that you understand the results. So I think that's a more comprehensive research study. Um, and then we did the cutoffs and things like that, you know, so that you make sure that the population that you are surveying is is pure, you know. So you don't want to have somebody answering the phone at home because mom's not home and then they count you. Or it's grandma who hasn't worked in 50 years right. and they count her, right? So I think that that's important. So, we, you know, with that aside, I found some things that were similar and different. Um, what was the most interesting is that we approached the study as looking at gender, just like they did, men versus women. And I looked at leaders because the word manager um, is, not, is not really appropriate anymore. Most, most executives would tell you that you're looking for leaders sure. and leaders drive teams. You know, managers manage stuff, right. you know, or process. So with that aside, what we did find is that it wasn't about men and women at all. It was about generations. And that, to me, was when you have a large enough sample and you can start slicing the dice in data, that gets interesting. Well, that, you know, so that would then say to me that, that if I'm 40, I want a manager or a director or a leader that's close to my age that I can relate to, uh, and, and my uh, uncomfortableness would come from maybe having a 24-year-old boss or, let's say, a 75-year-old boss that I can't relate to. Gender isn't the driver there. Well, so, exactly, right? So what we found is that women, it was very interesting, we did Generation Y, X, and Boomers, women ranked women highest on all leadership attributes, characteristics, and skills. Oh. So women were very interested in having women as leaders. Um, and again, we did not use the word manager, so I can't really, you know, accurately compare what we did. But what was in even more interesting is that men in Generation Y and X were gender agnostic, and, and today that's age 53 and under. Um, so that's your working population. And then the last piece that was very interesting, it was the boomer men. So age 53 and up were the ones who had very traditional views of men and women in the workforce, which is what I think that their poll was trying to elaborate on without any you know, lot yeah. of backup.
That makes sense. And it makes sense because a lot of boomer men never saw women in the workforce right. as managers or leaders. They only saw them at home, you know. Um, and so that was, you know, the I Love Lucy generation, right? If you think about it, sure. leave it to Beaver generation. So what I saw was that the younger generations really don't carry those gender lenses. So stop banging on the wall against it, right? It's really about having good leaders. And Generation X and Y have, are used to having working moms, working dads, single moms, single dads, you know, every kind of configuration a family, and it's not really an issue for them. See, and I, I want to get to this because I, I read with great interest. I mean, you, you are a strong businesswoman, uh, but but I read this article. There, there's a bunch of female senators and, and senatorial candidates. Uh, Allison Grimes is running in Kentucky, and, and they've formed this support circle, uh, w- which really goes beyond the, the, the parties and the politics. And uh, a Michigan senator, Debbie Sabanow, says as follows, quote, There's a very big difference when women leaders are involved in solving problems. We're used to negotiating, whether in the workplace or in families, end quote. I I thought that was a little bit insulting to me as a man. You know, like, like I don't fight the battles with my kids. I I don't have to do that sort of negotiating. I mean, we're kind of past that, aren't we? Well, so that was another segment of our study. So let me just give you the finding. Was when we surveyed boomer men... And um, men and women were, were ranking men the stronger negotiators. But when we interviewed, hands down, 85% of the people we interviewed said that women were very strong negotiators, particularly in complex um, negotiations. And so what we saw is that if people say the word negotiation, it has this aggressive connotation. And so people immediately jump to Men are aggressive, you know, car sales, you know, we're going to get, and women know how to do complexity and large scale and big picture because they understand a lot of the things that you mentioned. So I don't think that either one is better or worse because personally, negotiation to me is not an art or a science or a gender uh, attribute. It's a skill. And, And... Anyone can learn that with practice, but I think the main point is the negotiation has changed. It has changed from the win-lose, which many still associate in a negative, poor guys, as masculine, to the we need to solve global crises issues and you can't do it win-lose. You need to be collaborative and big picture, yeah. and that's associated with women. So I- interesting that you brought that yeah, up. It's- that was- yeah, I mean, I, I'm sorry to cut you. I, it, it's fascinating stuff, and I, I feel like we we barely even delved into that issue, which I would like to do again, but I'm flat out of time. Dr. Yep. Tracy Weiland, I appreciate it. How could people find out more about you? Oh, thank you, Mark. My website is Tracy Weiland, T-R-A-C-E-Y-W-I-L-E-N.com. My Twitter is at Tracy Weiland. I'm on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Pinterest. Everywhere. You're everywhere. All right, Dr. Weiland, as always, I appreciate it. Thank you.